Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'd like to continue off from a video I recently made on the open source Notion alternative called App Flowy. In the previous video, I, I struggled a bit getting it to install and set up and configured for a real world project. So in today's video, I will do a better job of explaining just how powerful this software can be and why it might be a great idea for you to give it a try on your own. And a quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored or endorsed by AppFlowy, but I really like the software and I really like the project and I especially like owning my own data and keeping my data private and secure. So I use it. In my previous video, I missed two very important features that I will cover in today's video using AppFlowy. The first feature I would like to discuss is called Project Grid, and the second is Project Board. And I've already gone ahead and created a Project Grid, which I've called Jabberwocky Project, and the Project Board is called Things. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the Jabberwocky Project quick. So if you've used Notion or Obsidian or any of the alternatives that represent uh, a layout like this, you'll be very familiar with AppFlowy's layout. It's very intuitive very clean, very polished, uh, and very simple. What we have here, we'll start at the top left. We have a title column. We have a scope column. We have a type column. We have a status column, a department column, target deadline column, velocity column, budget column, and then a button for a new column. On the top right, we have filter, we have sort, we have settings. If you notice here, it has a capital A and a lowercase a, and some of them have this icon, and some of them have this. This one here represents a text icon. So if I click edit properties, you can see it's a text field. It could also be a number, a date, a select, a multi-select, a checkbox, a URL, or a checklist. And where that comes in really handy is if you're trying to format data, like over here on budget, not only is it a number, but it also adds a US currency validation. It, it works really great for that because it, it's formatting everything and it's making sure that you don't have any mistakes. Very useful. And if I just wanted to have this as a number only and not a dollar sign, I can easily just switch that back or perhaps a different currency, maybe the Canadian dollar. And so now it's switched. So we'll put it back to US dollar. We'll just leave it there. These are the multi-select. So multi-select, I can choose more than one, obviously. In this case, I could type a new one that doesn't exist, or I could choose to repurpose one that already does exist. Since it is a multi-select, I could just type in the letter V and it will filter and find the V1 tag for me. That's really handy and really powerful. The status here is a single select. So you can only choose one and you can add more options. We'll just add another option here. And if I wanna select it, I just select it like so. Choose this instead. You can see it removed the block on hold tag and replaced it with this uh, random tag I just made up. You can also delete that tag if I'd like. I'll just delete it. And I can also change the color. So I'll delete it here and I can reassign it to what it was before. The department is similar to the type over here. It's a multi-select, so I won't go through that. The target deadline is a date format and you can choose a few other options here. You could have date or you could choose a, another option, of course, but you could also format the date in different various formats. You can also add a time and you can format that. And I have a toggle here for including the time or not. In this case, I won't do it, so I'll just leave it as it is. And I think we've already covered the velocity in the budget column here. The other thing I could do is I can filter by title, by any of the headings here scope, type, status, and department. I can also sort, which I am doing right now, I'm sorting by velocity because I like to work on the hardest things first. So the hardest thing here is launch an iOS app. It's related to all of these, all of these different departments and the budget is quite high here. So it's very important that we get it done. This is all arbitrary, by the way, this is made up data, fictitious data. Um, but yeah, you can sort. So I'm hitting sort here. I can sort by a column title, which is velocity and a descending or ascending uh, values. And it saves it by default. So, whoops, I just deleted that sort. So let's go back here by velocity. And we go in here to descending. And so if I was to go back to this page, it will save it as the order. So whatever order you selected, whatever sort order you had, it'll, it'll uh, be persistent. The last tab here is settings, and that will just toggle on the, uh, if you want to hide a column, for instance, if you want to show or hide a column, you can do so like that. The only downside to that is uh, what I'll bring up next here is if I click on this icon, open as page, I'll click on that. And this brings up more of a detailed view. The one thing I noticed though, is if I was to hide this property from, let's say it will hide the budget. 
So we'll go back into settings, we'll hit properties, and we'll go and hide budget. So because we don't see it here, which is what I want, if I click in here, I don't see it here. And that's sort of bothersome to me because I feel like in the detail page, I want to see all of the stuff, but in my grid view, I don't want to see it. So that's just a, just a thing that bothers me. But again, since this project is open source, I as a developer, or you as a developer, have the opportunity to go and contribute to this project, which is exciting. That's about it on this uh, project grid. Okay, now we're here at the uh, Kanban style board within App Flowy. And really, this is just another view, depending on how you like to chop up your work. Starting from the top left, we have no status, we have to do, we have doing, and we have done. Four columns, four buckets. We have a plus button here, and we have a new button here. Both of them, I believe, do the same thing. Uh, this is a thing to do. Next, we'll click on the card itself, and we can further our edits. We can assign a status. We can add a property. Looks like this is a number. We can create a target date and we can add a description. We can also assign a new column. If it doesn't exist, it would create a new property for us. And we can fill that out. Okay. And let's just say I want to move it now back to no status. I could either drag it or let's say it was here again. I could click on, whoops, not the pencil. If I click on the card again, I can reassign its status here. So I could go back to no status by just removing that and it puts it back. Okay, we've created a task. We've moved the task from each bucket, each column. Now we wanna customize the headings and perhaps maybe we wanna add a new column or a few columns. You just click on the card itself, you go to the status. And for this one, we'll change the word done to completed. And we can also assign it a new color. We'll have to hit enter in this uh, text input to change the actual text. Now that that's been completed, we can actually assign it as well to the completed. Uh, and now if we want to add a new column, we'll call it blocked. We'll go back in there and we'll create a new tag called blocked. We'll hit enter. And yeah, we'll leave it that color. But as you noticed, it created a new column for us, which is fantastic. That's what we want. And it assigned it to uh, the block tag. So now we can still move these about, right? But I see one problem here. The completed should sort of feels like it should be in the far right. So all you have to do is just click here and drag it. Simple as that. So there you go. We've set up a, a Kanban board. We've added one task. You could add multiple tasks by, you know, obviously clicking the plus button or the new button down there. You can move it around. You can customize it any which way you'd like. And uh, that's it. That's all I got. I really hope you found this video helpful. I know I did going through it a second time and refining it a little bit more and taking the time to get to learn App Flowy a little bit better. So if you're in the mood for swapping out Notion for something open source, then I suggest you try App Flowy. And if you do, or if you have, please share your feedback below in the comments. It's a great tool. It's open source, you can contribute to it, you can customize it, it can be yours. And most of all, your data is safe and secure. So with that said, I've been Eric, you've been awesome, and I will see you in the next video. I was your Saturday flare, I was your holiday eggnog, I was hush, 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 inside a silly world, I was so silent like a movie.